<clears throat> yes, more people might join. And if they do, I will let them in. Mm, this is the EHP warm up dojo introduction call on April 19th, 2022. And I'm Nicole Hartley Bradford. And the work I do, I, I call it awakening the village. And I've been I have I was the originator of awakening the village very slowly and very surely, but it burst into being through something called awakening cafe, which I held space for weekly for two years, an open space where anyone who was interested in creating the village of our wildest dreams, which for me was uh, an eco village, a Gaian eco village, where we live a kind of wild very close to Gaia, it as Gaia. And here comes nature, <laughs> speaking of Gaia. Mm. And for two years, I held this space. And one of the one of the most remarkable things that came for me from holding space for these uh, awakening cafes and these conversations and presentations and panels and discussions and celebrations that we had they were all about the village, how to create the village of, of our wildest dreams, how it came back over and over and over to what was happening about individual people's feelings and mostly their emotions. And the distinction that I started to see without, like it kind of worked up through me into my mental body rather than coming into my mental body first, and working its way down was that when I use when emotions are used for handling life, this doesn't work. The distinction is that emotions are from the past. And, and often there's a lot of energy and information in emotions as they come up, and they can be used for healing. And this, this is where emotional healing processes and EHP for short spaces are so valuable because in EHP spaces, emotions can be used for healing things. And then when I come out of the EHP space or the EHP dojo space, I can more readily use my feelings to handle my life responsibly. And for me, this is very much the difference between using a fire hose to water the garden or using a, like letting it rain and letting there be a sprinkler that gently is like rain rather than blasting away the garden with a fire hose. It's also, you know, it's also a bit like using a blowtorch to light a, a candle, you know, you just, the candle is done by the time the blowtorch is like, by the time I, as the person using anger unconsciously, realizes what's happening and I turn off the blowtorch and I'm like, oh my gosh, what have I done? Does anyone have memories of such experiences? No. Yeah, thank you. So for, for, really decades now, I've wanted more spaces to exist where emotions could be used for, for healing things so that feelings could be used for handling things. I've also been for, again, for decades, a game world builder, someone who, who was creating family, community, teams, mm, events that that were about creating a space for people to have extraordinary experiences that were not so available in modern culture spaces and what i hoped was that through interacting in these in these very different spaces that were alive where feelings and emotions were welcome that that connection would happen, closeness would happen, and a sense of being with and, and belonging and, and really family, chosen family would happen. 
And what I discovered was that without these distinctions about conscious feelings and using conscious feelings, the spaces would actually, things would not go well. Conflicts would come up, hurt feelings would come up, offenses, defensiveness, these clashes of interpersonal nature would come up and there weren't the tools and there wasn't the, the matrix, the, 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 the embodied wisdom to handle it differently than in modern culture spaces. So I, I started to really hone in on how, how this experience of, of five body intimacy was just impossible without the distinctions of conscious feelings work alive in the space. And when I was finally introduced to possibility management and the conscious feelings work in possibility management, the, the experiments that I had been doing and the results I had been getting, it was like a great big spotlight got, got turned on and I could see, I could be like, oh, this is, this is what's been happening. This is what it takes to get new results. And then I realized I'd had it backwards, that when I started going into spaces where emotions were being used to heal things, and then started being able to participate in discovery spaces, creation spaces, mm, training spaces, where feelings were being used to handle things and to create, I started to experience this closeness and this connection and I realized, oh, it goes this way around. I can't create the closeness and then do the healing. It's about doing the healing work together. And the consequence of this is closeness. And sometimes it, it didn't happen. Sometimes there were lots of emotional healing processes and intense training spaces and relational spaces were, were, were being broken and people were still leaving had a very different nature to it mm -hmm. when this happened between people who have distinctions for, that possibility management uses. It, it was less of a breakup and more of a taking a break while somebody went through something. And then, and then coming back together was empowered by more processes that possibility management offers, such as mm, dismantling resentments and withdrawing expectations and starting over and becoming an experimenter so that instead of saying you know i fucked this relationship up i could say wow that relationship went this way and now i have this gold from how it went to apply to another relationship experiment with the same person or with someone else and this just keeps rolling in my life and i feel so much joy about this and so much aliveness about holding space for this first phase of conscious feelings work. And the, in particular, the, the earlier distinctions that are shared in Clinton Callahan's book, mm, Directing the Power of Conscious Feelings. Now, of course, it goes into second phase of feelings work, where, fe where, where feelings are being hand used to handle life responsibly. And the distinction here is that phase one never ends. There's always more experimenting to do. There's always more matrix to grow. Mm. And an example of this is, is like who, who have both of you who are in the room now, have you had space he held for you to do an emotional healing process already? I know you have Masha. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. And have you each held space for someone else to do an emotional healing process? Yes. Not a lot. Yeah, not a lot, Linda. And, and my guess is that, that, I mean, there's these two sides of it. There's the space holding, and then there's being the feeler. Mm -hmm. And what I love about the EHP warm up dojo is that we practice on both sides. <clears throat> and, and this is what makes for, <clears throat> for a next culture space. 
So instead of the modern culture kind of equivalent is the therapist and the client. And the therapist went to university and they succeeded and they're rocking at life because they are employed and they are good and they are right. And then the client who's having problems is, is, you know, not well broken, you know, inferior. And they might, because everyone has a gremlin, they might also have their gremlin might be very superior, you know, fucking therapist gonna like, you think you have it all figured out? Well, I'll show you mm -hmm. who knows what I mean, gremlins can do many things in those kinds of spaces. Mm. And, and this is again, something I love about the next culture nature of the EHP dojo and the warm up teams where we are in it together. We are on each other's team. And, <clears throat> and when I'm empowered, you're empowered. Winning is ha happening and transformation is happening. And we're discovering together and we're sharing our gold and we're empowering each other's experiments and cheering for each other and celebrating. And we're also, we have our swords and we're using our sword to say things like, you know, what's really going on there? What else is happening? And this, these are all skills and capacities that when I develop as a space holder, these serve me in my life outside the dojo. And as I develop as a feeler, these skills also serve me in my life outside the dojo. And this is phase two. So in the dojo spaces, the warm up dojo spaces, we, the, the custom of the space is we come in, we might, oh, I just see that I would have frozen for a few moments there. Is there anything that is essential that I fill you in on that got missed in the recording? Okay. Mm. The custom of the space is to come in as the space holder. I scan the space and notice any necessity for going into first position or, or really getting into first position. Each of us first position being centered, grounded, having my personal bubble of space and setting the energetic space of the team are all kind of ongoingly material for the team space and for our, our experiments outside the team space. Then we do a check-in about where we're at, about our experiments from last week and about what our burning questions are and what we're bringing to the space to, to, to get the, the team wisdom to uh, build on next steps. And then often we do experiments, well, so far, always we do experiments in, in the one and a half hours on Tuesdays and two hours on Mondays that, yeah, give us energy and information for next experiments. And then once we leave the space, we're all, we all have our next experiments underway. And then the telegram space for each team, there's a Monday telegram space and a Tuesday telegram space is where we kind of keep the momentum going. And also where spin-off spaces can can happen. And pretty soon I I anticipate that there will become a, a phase one conscious feelers telegram space where people from both of the Monday and Tuesday teams connect. And then there's also, of course, the possibility management, possibility creation village, and the EHP collaboration space, as well as the PM event space where people can be woven into those, those groups too. Are there any questions about anything I've said? And then I would like to do some experimenting with you. Cool. I don't... At this okay. point. Okay, great. Can I, can, would anyone like to share a little bit about what what turns you like what brought you here what what made it so that you were a yes to being here today 
Should I go first? <laughs> I think you just did. Okay. <laughs> um, I have been working with possibility management for um, probably since the fall and did a um, two to three month um, container. Um, and it was very much life changing. Um, and then carried on to work sort of in that phase two myself in my life, uh, but kept in contact with the person that I was working with. And then seeing the benefit of that in my life started um, with, uh, he started with my husband and then most recently with my son. So it's just kind of trickled um, along. Um, oh, and um, another friend as well. So um, I am just wildly intrigued and in love with um, how it's changed my life and how I feel it will change the world and um, just feel so much joy. And I, I, I guess I've just been wondering now what the next step is for me, um, quitting my um, um, role in the old matrix and wondering how I can start in the new world and can I be a part of that sort of next culture and wondering how, you know, I, I understand because I went through the, the container um, with, um, with Jeff that worked in possibility management. So I, I really hadn't looked into how that works and how I could get involved with that and how I could help teach or um, my husband and I, and, and I guess I just don't know what the process is and the education and the teaching and, and different um, options for being involved. So um, I guess that's where um, I had been talking with Jeff and asked him, and I don't know whether he connected you, like said something. Yeah, he did, right? He connected yeah. you, Nicole, with me. So I'm sure it was because of that conversation and asking, or it was just a, a thought. I'm not really sure, but the universe. <laughs> yes. I think and, the Earth's Coincidence Control Office sounds like it was at work because yes. I... I want to just tell this quick legend that yesterday I got the impulse to reach out to Jeff and ask, how are you doing? Mm. Jeff, the er Jeff, um, Shub, the urban barefoot, he's a legendary pirate human. And I let him know that because of the, because of how things are happening in modern culture right now, there are these limitations about, about my, the, that so far have made it impossible for me to leave the country in the last few months. And, and so I'm, I seem to be getting this message, this, this job to stay in, in Canada and, mm. and, and especially the, the work around, I'm involved in a lot of different teams that are creating bridge houses. And just briefly, bridge houses are, are houses where, the, the space is held for possibility coaching, emotional healing process, for training in next culture. And, and the, in a call yesterday, we made a little, a little map of, of how, it, how it can look, where you come into a bridge house from the phase one side of things. And, and then transformation happens in the bridge house and you come out into this phase two, just like you said, Linda, you know, you came out of this container and into a phase two kind of adventure. Mm -hmm. But the distinction we had was that you, you keep going in on this side and keep coming out on this side. Even when I wake up in the morning, I'm coming into this transformational space. And when I go to bed at night, when I, you know, go out of the bridge house to, to go and get groceries, you know, here I am in phase two, and then I come back in the front door again. <laughs> mm -hmm. And, and this is, this is what I think the nature of transformational spaces is. I'm always starting over and, mm -hmm. and, and, and this is so in the team spaces on Monday and Tuesday and in every space I've ever been in that was held by someone using possibility management. 
Yeah, thank you. Mm -hmm. So and yeah, who knows what might come of this? <laughs> Exactly. And I, I never, I, I mean, you said my name, but, um, and I'm not sure, is it Masha? Am I saying that right? Yeah. Um, I live in Canada as well, um, close to, in, in the province of Manitoba, close to Winnipeg, the capital of that. It's kind of right in the middle of Canada. Yeah. Lots of snow. <laughs> still. <laughs> and April, still. <laughs> yeah. Wow, thank you. I feel joy to meet you. Possibility Management Canada is is evolving. That's amazing. I'm intrigued. <laughs> How about you, Masha? What, what do you want to say anything? Um, well, what, what brings me to this place is the commitment I made to to yeah, to keep evolving in this EHP, EHP holding space skills uh, area. And that's actually all I have to say for now. Thank you. Mm -hmm. cool. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. And I, I get the impulse to say something because I, I I've heard from both of you that there's this, there's this part about, mm, as I was saying about how I have this commitment to bring the distinctions of, of space holding into community spaces so that then that can empower the kind of space holding that creates closeness and creates this five body intimacy. There's also something about the shift that, that you mentioned, Linda, about leaving Mm, whatever jobs and modern culture prisons that are mm. about money and being part of the system so that then I can uh, create next culture and also in in this day and age in this in this you know Clinton talks about how there's a, a change of epoch or epoch mm. happening from modern culture patriarchal, capitalist empire that 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 began perhaps 10,000 years ago with the emergence of agriculture and and that this was a this was a, a long time this is a long time and this beginning there's there's this you know there's a lot of unplugging to do there's mm -hmm. a lot of breaking out of the prisons to do there's a lot of getting the getting the standard human intelligence thought where the shit thought we're out of ourselves, out of myself, out of my mental body, my emotional body, getting the energetic blocks out of my energetic body, making, growing into and plugging into and jacking into my archetypal body so that I am next culture. I mm -hmm. am a next culture archetypal adult, initiated, authentic adult, who in collaboration with other authentic adults this is just what happens. We create next culture. We create next culture spaces. We hold space for transformation. And that in this era, that, that this is now my profession. It's, I don't call it a profession, except sometimes as a translation when I'm speaking to people who have more modern culture mindset going on. Though sometimes my gremlin's like, yeah, I'm a pro space holder. I'm a pro emotional healing process space holder. And this is, this, this works for me. This, this works that, that this is a way to make the shift out of being in those jobs to hold space and have the material value, the financial value come in, but differently too. And this is a big part of what the bridge house, hmm, discovery spaces are this is a big part of what's happening in them how does money go differently in a bridge house as a bridge to next culture space as distinct from how it goes in the banks game world mm. and there was a an amazing call just yesterday where clinton and Anne chloe held space to to share what's going on in this bridge house game world development 
So in a way, the EHP warm-up dojo team is, is like going into a bridge house for a couple of hours once a week so that then I can make my home where I live more like a bridge house. And for me, what I want next and, and why I feel so much joy about connecting with other Canadians using possibility management is that it seems like one of the tasks on my archetypal lineage that my archetypal lineage has put on my bench is to is to gather the Canadians using possibility management, maybe bring in trainers from other places so that we can uh, originate a bridge house, a network of bridge houses, moving into a network of eco villages. Oh, I, I see your message, Masha, that you having a fever. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, I feel glad about you taking care of yourself and having been here. Yes, thank you. I am happy there is a recording. I'm watching. Yeah, perfect. Thank you. Thank you. Bye, Bye, -bye for now. Bye. And just yeah, sensing into the shift in space as as both now nature and Masha are not in it. And my question for you, Linda, is do you want to actually, yeah, my proposal is that we that we end the dojo warm up introduction space, stop mm -hmm. the recording and have a conversation just us. Mm -hmm, for sure. Okay, let's do it to hit the right buttons.